Summary of the book The Ultimate Secrets of Complete Self-Confidence Composition Robert Anthony We thought that happiness was reserved for a few people, so we forced ourselves to adapt to a modest level of hopes. But the whole matter stems from our internal thoughts that create our external perception. We limit ourselves to failures, and we kill our difference by following the herd and then submitting, but as they say, your bliss is found within you, so stop degrading yourself and exaggerating your mistakes to be free. Understand and love yourself, stop being frustrated with your level of performance, be a person open to all new values, ideas, and experiences, and rearrange your thoughts to awaken your new self. Changing the world may seem possible if you start with yourself. Chapter 1. Our false beliefs hypnotize us. It makes us slaves to the opinions of others, and liberation lies in self-reliance. The effect of false beliefs is demonstrated through the experiment of placing a woman under the influence of hypnosis, convincing her of her inability to lift a pen. If her mental inability determines her physical strength, Private beliefs are the conscious and subconscious information from which we create a firm, unchangeable belief. It arises from wishful thinking, that is, our desire for something to be right for the sake of wanting it, as addicts see what is right in their addiction. Upon realizing this, we will stop resisting reality, raise our current level of awareness, and accept ourselves by constantly reorganizing our beliefs. You are a slave to what others think of you. And you need to beg them and praise them for what they can offer you, so their advice becomes commands. To get rid of this slavery, rely on yourself, break the habit of dependence, and bear the consequences of your mistakes. Then no one will let you down, and you will not have to procrastinate or flee. Or the need to deceive and maneuver, and you will do what you want. Stop constant comparison as it reflects weak self-confidence, kills creativity, and generates hostile competition to win praise, which brings us back to dependence. The acceptable competition is with ourselves to develop ourselves, but does awareness have a role in addressing the problems resulting from wrong beliefs? Chapter 2. The solution to the problems of low self-esteem and guilt lies in the solution, I in raising awareness and self-forgiveness. Low self-esteem in a child arises due to his saturation with the beliefs and ideas of parents. In addition to his dependence on others and comparison with them, he feels incompetent and the frustrations of his school years make matters worse because teachers use distorted standards such as IQ tests. The same applies to negative religious qualifications, which amplify feelings of guilt and worthlessness, and physical appearance plays a major role in this. People with low self-esteem are addicted to complaining and putting down others. They are rivals characterized by greed, deceit, and lack of close friends. They enter a state of depression because they fall short of expectations and they show hesitation for fear of making mistakes in order to compensate for feelings of incompetence and gain respect and sympathy. It is necessary to raise awareness to overcome this. Your awareness is usually affected by false beliefs that distort you. The stage of changing it begins when you realize that you are doing your best within your current awareness. This will help you accept your reality and accept the behaviors of others resulting from their current awareness and not force them to imitate your awareness, which gives you the ability to control your actions and reactions. When you change your awareness, follow your positive incentives, evaluate the expected benefits and advantages, do what you want within the limits of your physical and mental capabilities, discover mistakes, and bear the consequences. I am trying to fix it. The feeling of guilt affects awareness and is usually used to impose control as parents do with their children or a teacher with his students. This may lead to remorse and changing values to suit the values of parents and teachers, but this does not solve the basic problem, so wrong behaviors are repeated and the most dangerous types of guilt are it is directed from the self towards the self because we violate certain principles. 
Or does it mean in ourselves over an event yesterday from the past? Which leads to us punishing ourselves with depression, feeling incompetent, and having low self-esteem. The best solution lies in self-forgiveness, moving beyond the past, learning from its mistakes, looking to the future, and reforming current awareness. But what is the role of the mind and feelings of love in achieving successes? Chapter 3 Creative imagination emerges from the meeting of love and reason to lead us towards unleashing the enormous capabilities of the human mind. Love lies between affection and lust and is the attractive force that unites and harmonizes the universe. It generates positive energy for success and achievement. Love is complemented by our understanding that two people do not exist as one person. Each of us has his own values that the other party must respect in order to create a more intimate relationship, but the most important thing is that a person cannot give love if he does not love himself, so he must help others and seek their help in order to open their eyes to their magnificence and greatness. In contrast, our mind has the ability to choose, it has wisdom and knows the answers, and the mind has three aspects, which are consciousness, subconsciousness, and superconsciousness, and together they form what is called the united company. The mind, with its three aspects, is capable of amplifying any idea, attracting it mentally, and turning it into reality. And to calm the conscious mind, we hear the talk of the superconscious that reaches us through reservations in the form of a feeling or desire that urges us to achieve success. As for imagination, it builds a mental image that does not exist in reality and nourishes it with creativity so that it is born in the material world. Controlling creative imagination begins with controlling the conscious side of the mind, which comes from the five senses. We must follow the imprisonment of the superconscious mind to regulate the wrong images in the subconscious to achieve positive experiences. What are the practical steps that help us achieve our goals? Chapter 4. Setting the Goal, Psychological Comfort, and Setting a Plan They are the keys to achieving achievements and desires. Determine your goal and create a written plan with steps and a start and end date over a period of five years to achieve it and know that the feeling of pleasure lies in achieving the goal or completing part of the plan. Be brave to take the first step and allow your new consciousness to follow the plan and receive spiritual guidance. Be flexible with change and accept failure with determination. Think positively and you will find solutions to all problems. Transform thoughts into kinetic energy that achieves your goal. Do not forget that positive words play an important role in raising your level of self confidence, and they also increase the flow of creative power. And look for peace of mind that is achieved through meditation. Connecting with the source of strength within us directs us to the right path and provides us with creative ideas. It is preferable to meditate daily in the morning and evening in a quiet, dimly lit place. When you begin, do not resist your thoughts, relax and release, allow the energy to enter your consciousness, state the idea briefly, and open yourself to the voice of intuition. Visualize a picture of your desires and goals, affirm them, and mentally thank God. This will leave you in a state of anticipation. D.O. not forget the importance of time in achieving your endeavors. Chapter 5 Taming and utilizing time is the path to success, and overcoming fears lies in accepting change and benefiting from it. If we learn to control time, it will help us perform our tasks and achieve our goals. The first step to controlling it is to wake up early to feel the value and love of time, as the value of time increases with experiences that expand our perceptions and help us understand life and its meaning. Your attempt to kill time through laziness and boredom kills your creative imagination. To increase the effectiveness of time, write down six things that you would like to accomplish in a day. Next, arrange them according to their priority. Remember, 
the best time to start is now. Be brave and start the implementation process, and do not let the fear of failure get in the way of our own fears, which is a destructive feeling in our attempt to build complete self confidence. To get rid of it, correct your mistakes and do not repeat them. Face your fears to reveal their truth and live your present in which your fears and anxiety about the future disappear. To get rid of physical tension, go for a walk and enjoy a sense of humor that breaks the seriousness and relieves psychological tension. Remember, our biggest fear is change. We cannot prevent it, so it is better to accept it and look forward to exploiting IT.do not reject change and become a servant of monotony. Have the courage to say that you are special and that this boring life does not suit you. Remember the necessity of listening to others and caring for them to increase your chances of success. Chapter 6 More opportunities for us to communicate positively with others by listening and caring for them. Using spoken and nonverbal communication, we can understand and change our attitudes toward others, not try to change them. The most important methods of communication are listening, as discontent, boredom, and interruptions lead to gaps in communication between people. So talk to them about their interests and connect them to yours, allow them to express their opinions, exchange positive conversations with them, avoid complaining and try to inspire them, be friendly with them, do not condemn yourself in them, be open and balanced, and you will eventually learn to love yourself and them. Tell them stories as they deepen others' understanding of you and convey ideas. Complex and show the influence of others on you. Give them honest expression by highlighting their most important positive qualities and remember that keeping your appointments, performing humble acts of courtesy, and remembering people's names increases the effectiveness of communication and enhances credibility. Don't be afraid to take the first step to get to know people armed with a smile, stay away from negative energy drainers, and get closer to positive people. A notable paragraph from the book, many people think that a positive mental attitude is unrealistic because a positive thinker only seeks to escape from problems, tragedies, and despair, but this is not the case at all. Positive thinking is a way of looking at your own problems and the problems of humanity and trying to find solutions to them through constructive work. The difference between a negative thinker and a positive thinker is similar to the reaction of two people to a cup half full of water. A negative person says the glass is half empty, but a positive person knows the glass is half full. You may have thought that happiness comes from a source outside yourself, but you have lost your way. Your happiness and comfort come from within you. It all starts when you know your true motivations, get to know yourself better, accept your missteps, and learn from them, and overcome your false beliefs that cause you low self-esteem and guilt. So set a plan and a goal, and listen to your superconscious mind. Use your time to benefit and profit. Don't forget to listen to others and care about them. Then you will learn how to love yourself and others, and you will generate complete confidence in yourself that will illuminate the paths of success and excellence for you.